with the best highlights across Northeast Wisconsin. This is Friday Night Blitz with John Miller. Welcome into Friday Night Blitz. I'm John Miller filling in tonight for the Sports Wizard, Sports Director Brandon Kennard, who is out at our Sports Showdown game. Trips to the state title were on the line tonight. Let's see who made their way down to Madison. And let's start with Kimberly taking on Bayport in Menasha. Kimberly, a three seed, Bayport a one seed. Hard to argue these two teams were the best in Northeast Wisconsin. Here they are today. Four minutes into the game. Paper Baker strike first. Running back Blake Berry with the direct snap. Rumbles into the end zone. 7 nothing. Kimberly. Six minutes later, Pirates strike back. Who else? Stud quarterback Cole Benson falling his blockers into the end zone. And then near the end of the first quarter, Seth Myron. Hell, he's going to drop back, air it out, and look at this grab from Jackson Garbish. He comes down with it in the end zone. Woo. Kimberly up seven. Pirates going to go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, however. Tevin Montgomery, good luck stopping this guy. Looking like Maurice Jones drew out there. We're all tied up as he finds the end zone. One minute and four seconds later, hello, Blake Berry again. Hits the hole, cuts it to the far side. He finds Pater, 21 to 14 now. And then how about Myron to Garbish? One more time, he hits him over the middle for a touchdown. Papermakers never look back, winning 42 to 21 and are headed to the state, state title game and face McGuanago. Now we'll head to Menasha, where Brandon Kennard was on hand to see the thrilling matchup firsthand. Thanks, John. I'm here with Kimberly running back Blake Berry. Incredible performance tonight, four touchdowns. Is this the best game you've ever played, you think? I think uh, with the kind of the atmosphere going into the game and the kind of pressure going into the game, I think I performed really well. But at the same time, I think my offensive line played their best game tonight too and came out and balled out tonight. Yeah, got to give those guys credit. We were talking up in the booth. It seemed like every time you touched the ball, boom, you were past the defensive line into the second level. What was working for you guys so well? I think obviously what was working, like you said, was getting up to the second level. Obviously it doesn't happen every game, but the offensive line really took their job seriously this week and studied film really hard and they played really good. And it just made my job easy getting to the second level. It's been four years since Kimberly was last in the state championship game. We were just talking, you were in eighth grade when that happened. That's a long gap for a program like this. How does it feel to be the senior class that gets them back to Camp Randall? Uh, it feels great uh, working out in the off season and just doing all the little things that got to this point and finally getting to the point is just, it feels amazing and I can't even put into words. All right, one more left. They'll be taking on McGuanago in the state championship game a week from tonight. Thanks for your time, Blake, and John, back to you. Thanks, Brandon. Let's head down the road to Ashwaubenon. Division two football, six seed Kakana versus three seed West appear. These two went to overtime back in August. Phantoms got the W. Galloping Ghost, first possession, Finley Doriot. He's picked off by Thomas Mudd of the Phantoms. He takes it into Kakana territory. Can they capitalize? Najee Mitchell's going to be stopped on fourth and two. Kakana takes over. Next up, handoff goes to Noah Hoffman. He's trying to make something happen, but he's going to get the ball ripped out by Easton DeShane of West Pier, and they recover it in the end zone. West Pier is up 7 to nothing. That's your score at the half. Now the first drive of the second half. Kakana takes seven and a half minutes off the clock. Hoffman gets redemption with the touchdown there. Now Myron looking to answer back. Watch this, scrambling, scrambling. Eaves it up, Ryder Lesage for a touchdown is there. They take a six point lead, West to Pier rolls from there, 26 to seven. Now let's head over to Division Four, Two Rivers, trying to stop Catholic Memorial. Can Purple Raiders pull off the ultimate upset? Here's a little jet sweep here from Catholic Memorial. Crusaders up seven. Now Two Rivers trying to answer, Justin Klinkner drops back to pass. But he's going to be taken down for the sack. Catholic Memorial is rolling. Now they're going to hand this one off to Corey Smith. He had over 1,000 yards rushing this season. So how about some more? He's going to find the end zone to score. Catholic Memorial wins 20 to 14. That one's a lot closer than other people thought. And one other Division Four game we'll bring you later is Freedom. We'll have that score for you and the highlights, hopefully. Plus, we have some great games in the lower divisions with Kiwani and St. Mary Springs in action. Plus, we have our play of the night and Badgers highlights. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Friday Night Blitz. We just showed you some great highlights from the higher divisions. Now we have some more playoff football action and some Badgers basketball down at American Family Field to get to. So let's dive right in. Let's go back to football in Division 5. Kiwani versus Lacrosse Aquinas. Opening quarter, 
Mitchell Thompson for Kiwani doing what he does best. He takes a snap, makes a man miss, goes through a few more guys, and he takes it down to the nine. Nice 27 yard run right here. A few snaps later, it's a storm. Get on the board first with a touchdown, but the extra point will be blocked. So six to nothing lead for the storm. Second quarter, Maddox Mueller hauls in this touchdown pass. The storm within two at halftime. Let's roll to the third quarter. Kiwani down 16. This is what can happen. Owen Carlson fumbles on the ensuing kickoff return. Can't let the defending champs take advantage like that. Kiwani would score towards the end, but by then it was way out of reach. The Storm lose to the Blue Golds 44-19. Here's Tyler Job reporting in Wisconsin Rapids. Last week, 15 points was enough for the Storm to strike down Southern Door. This week, 19 points really wasn't close to what they needed to take down the Blue Golds as Aquinas' offense just proved too much. Yeah, no, they uh, definitely made some big plays and we knew that they were going to and, um, you know, made a, you know, a few missed tackles and, and didn't make some plays when we needed to, unfortunately. One game short of going to state, but it took a lot of effort to get this far. So what do you make of the season? I, no, definitely really proud of the guys with what they accomplished throughout the year. Um, you know, right now it definitely stings a little bit being this close, but uh, in time I think they'll realize what, how much they really did accomplish this year. Kiwani falls one game short of state, and it concludes the season with an 11 and 2 record. At Wisconsin Rapids, Tyler Job, NBC 26. And thanks so much, Tyler. St. Mary Springs taking on Stratford in D6. Stratford, well, they're going to get on the board first. They're going to air it out. They're going to use the passing game here. Gambit Leonard's going to sneak behind the defenders. There he is. Touchdown. They go up 7 to nothing. Now they're going to try to go through the air, try to add on to that lead. Air it out once again. But St. Mary Springs, oh, they're going to be called for pass interference. Now we're going to have another play here. They're going to continue to air it out. Stratford. Going to throw incomplete once again, but that doesn't matter. Stratford's going to roll 20 to 14. This game went into overtime. Now let's shift back to Division 4. Freedom taking on Columbus. Colton Brunel. Let's get to those highlights. Colton Brunel is going to have a touchdown to fire up Columbus. He runs this one in 8 to 3, but Freedom responds. Matt Weingard doing what he does best. He airs it out. Carson Clausen. Got to come down with it. Let's get to him. Let's get to him. And he's going to get in the end zone. Now let's get another one from Colton Brunel. Columbus is going to retake the lead on this rushing touchdown, 15 to 10. And now another Clawson touchdown. Freedom is going to go up 16 to 15. But Brunel, he had a heck of a game. He finishes off the hat trick with another touchdown. Columbus cruises to a 32 to 16 win. Now let's check on the Shiocton Chiefs. It took on the Cashton Eagles today in Division 7, and they will head to the state title game to face Regis as they won 21 to 19. So 